Uh, we're in number 30 of our ongoing series every two weeks. Um, last week we did an update on new available web packages. Uh, and this week um, I'm kind of excited to show you something we've been working on um, towards the end of last year uh, for doing browser to desktop integrations. So I'll just jump right into it. Uh, I do have some demos, but just a quick overview of why we're doing this uh, before I do those. Um, so traditionally from a browser, you can't get to uh, resources on the desktop unless you use some some proprietary plugins like ActiveX controls or something, and even those are quite limited and difficult to use and aren't supported across uh, many browsers. Uh, so this has always been sort of a, a topic that comes up when we're looking at uh, requirements for an application that has to run in a browser, yet it needs access to things like the local or network fire, file system, printers, scanners, you know, um, controlling ports and hardware, cache drawers, things like that, scanners, barcode scanners, and also other installed software too. So to be able to integrate with maybe uh, Word or um, or Excel or any other installed software. So this has typically been um, a blocker, but recently we did some research into this to see, you know, we think we could probably figure out a way around this or a couple ways around this. Um, so we did we did start a new project um, and we looked into bypassing this limitation. Uh, and the way we did it is, is uh, because um, the release of the client manager plugin in Servoy 8.2 included a broadcast mechanism, um, we're able to use Servoy Smart Client and broadcast uh, between a browser and you know an agent that will will serve as the desktop um, the desktop agent and allow uh, allow you to do desktop things from from the HTML5 client. Um, so we created a project called SPY Desktop Agent and we trialed this with several customers so far uh, quite successfully in proof of concepts where we did things like uh, we called network uh, scanners and we obtained images, we printed to network printers, we did COM integrations with Microsoft Word and Excel, I believe. Um, so, and we, we, we talked to the file system directly. So um, once you get over that bridge, you can pretty much do anything that a desktop uh, piece of software can do. So uh, let's have a look with some demos. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to how uh, in this, you know, in a simple case, how we could interact with the file system, how we could open a file with a native application and how we could also monitor the file system for changes. Uh, you can see that I have running in my browser a little uh, explorer here that I'm looking at my local file system and this doesn't use any uh, plugins or anything, it's actually talking through the broadcaster. Uh, I'm going to expand and go to, well, I have a little bug there where it collapses the first time. Uh, but I'm going to go in and I keep drilling into, uh, let's go, I don't know, look at a, uh, a log file or a properties file, or something like that. So I, I, every time I drill in here, it's actually requesting information from the desktop agent. Um, and then if I select uh, let's get a properties file here. Uh, you can see I, I've recovered some of the information, the file name, the path, last modified, size. And what I'd like to do is, is open this in the default editor. So typically in a browser, you'd have no access to be able to um, to see what you know software there is, let alone open a file and, and in, in a certain software. So I'm going to open this in um, the default editor, which is uh, Notepad++. You can see that it launched it um, over here in in my uh, editor. Now the next thing I want to do is to be able to monitor that file. So I'm going to come back to um, the browser here, and I'm going to click the watch button. And what I've done is I've I've added an event listener uh, in the desktop to know when that file has been has been modified. So if I come back here and do a hello world of sorts. And when I save, I should get a callback. And you could see that um, uh, I refreshed, uh, there was a, a little flicker there, I refreshed uh, the file. And you can see the timestamp for last modified now matches the clock on my system. So um, every time that I, I save that file, or it could be you know delete uh, file in that directory, whatever, 
I'm getting a callback back in the browser client to know that that file has been changed. And in this case, I just updated the information about it in the timestamp. Um, so that's really it. Those are the three parts of the demo. Uh, number one is just seeing the file system. Number two was opening a piece of software uh, on the desktop with uh, the, the select file. And the third one was uh, how to watch a file for changes. Uh, I can take you in under the hood a bit to show you what goes into that. Um, let's start with um, the project that we're using for this. So I have, a, I have an application over here um, uh, called uh, Example Desktop Agent, and you can see that uh, it has a module included called the SPY Desktop Agent. And there's a base form here called Abstract Agent, and all you have to do is extend this base form as a way of exposing uh, some, uh, some functionality that you want to be able to call remotely from, say, a browser. Uh, so what I've done in my project is I've created a, uh, a provider called Test Agent Provider, and it just implements um, a couple methods. One is um, to get um, to get an action, which is really a function based on a name. So first, it can expose the what action names are available, and the other one is is okay. So I get a uh, an action command string, and I want to be able to, to to call that remotely. And so then this just returns one of these two functions, uh, the get file info and the open file. Um, the other part of this are the um, uh, the events. So there's a, a method here to get event names, and you can see that there's only one here I have supported in, in the enum uh, for on file change. Um, then uh, there is a another method that you can override from the um, from the base form, which is uh, how to register for an event. And this is something that you would do, you would handle um, you know, in your own custom logic, but it does pass in the event name and any optional extra information that you want. In this case, um, the only event we have is that on file change and the, the piece of extra information that we pass in is, is just the file path that we wanna watch. And so we have this method called watch file, which is our own custom uh, logic, which um, you know uh, just starts watching that file. I, I don't think that that it's worth focusing on that. That's the custom part, not really the scaffolding that sets up how this works. Um, so if we look now at at what's calling this, we have this form uh, called um, test agent. Uh, I'll open this in the designer so you can. Form editor, uh, so you can see that on the um, on the left we have that tree component which shows the file, and on the right we have the details. Um, and um, this is what we see in the browser. And we, when we want to refresh that tree, we're we're making that remote call. Uh, so uh, the way this works is uh, I have some. I'll open this in the script editor now, and I have some methods in here. One is um, uh, to list the files, and what we do is we pass in the, the directory that we want to we want to start from, and it's calling the the SVY desktop agent project, and it it just does this call method, and it passes in a string, which is that action command, which references that enum in our provider, um, some information. Uh, and a callback. So this information could be anything. It's just optional. In this case, it's just the path that we want to start with when we list files, and then a callback because this is asynchronous. It's it's just a broadcast, and then it's going to receive a broadcast. It's not it's not synchronized. So then we go into our on list uh, files, which is the function down here, which then deals with capturing the info and and ref refreshes the tree. Uh, that part isn't really worth focusing on. It's the scaffolding that that allows that to happen, which is um, saying I'm going to call this remote action, I'm going to pass in some custom information, and I'm going to uh, receive a callback when it's done. Uh, the other part of this was um, when we went to um, uh, register a, a watcher. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, first I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, to open the file. So I have this other method down here called open file, and it's the same thing. Um, uh, we're doing that SUI desktop agent API call. We're passing in the open file command, which is just a string, and the custom information here is is the path that we want to open or the node that we're getting that's selected in 
in the tree, and that's what that's what um, opens it in uh, on the desktop side. Um, so the desktop agent project handles all of the all of the plumbing. It handles um, serializing this stuff and and broadcasting it as a message, receiving it, figuring out um, what to do with it, uh, and mapping it to the right target you know action that that gets called. Uh, the third example we did was was to watch the file. So we have this method down here, watch file. Um, and in this case, instead of doing the um, the call method of the SVY desktop agent, we're doing um, the register. And in this case, we're passing in, again, a string. It's not an action name this time. It's an event name and uh, a callback function that happens back here in the browser uh, or in the, the in the client session for the browser and then um, some extra info uh, that could be anything. Um, and in the, that case, this is just the path that we want to watch. So we're registering a listener for this, and then um, uh, we're registering the handler that gets called um, when that event happens down on the desktop. Uh, so that handler is back here, the on file change. I just print something out to the console, and uh, I refresh um, the file, which is just a, a custom logic here that that um, gets the file info and um, and updates the uh, the tree and the, and the, the fields that are showing on the form but it's really this uh, SUI desktop agent project that we have here that, that allows us to do that and it's um, it's pretty simple if I if I show it to you and ask for code complete you'll see that there's there's really only a few um, methods. There's the call method, um, which we do from the side of the, the browser uh, client or the register method. Uh, and then um, the invoke is happening from the desktop side and we can take a look at that. So if we go back to our provider, um, when uh, there's a there's an event, I'm calling this on file watch. When there's an event on the file system that I'm watching for, uh, I'm calling that invoke method again on that SVY desktop agent project, and I'm saying the event name is this on file change, and then um, there's some custom info. And what the what the desktop agent project will do is it'll route that that response or that you know notification that an event happened. It'll route it back to uh, the right callback method back in the in the ng client session uh, so that it gets called so in this way we knew that that the file had been modified and we were able to update the timestamp so um, that's the demo and that's looking under the hood um, let me go back to our slides here um, and just give you a, a recap so the setup is um, put this in full screen mode the setup here is that um, the um, abstract agent is that base form, which just exposes a few methods, um, and that's what you, that's what's used to discover implementations of you know what we call agent providers. And so all you have to do is extend that base form, and you expose your callable actions and your observable events that you know these will happen in the down in the in the desktop, and then you use the API to call those actions or to register those events. And you'll receive those callbacks back in the ng client session and you can run your logic there um, the the agent provider will expose those actions by implementing a couple uh, methods there's a typo there on get action names that shouldn't have two s's there um, but you you know here are the action names and here's the the action um, which maps to a function that that we can call oops and the, uh, then on the HTML5 client, the ng client session side, we use that API to, um, uh, to call it and to handle the callbacks. So we use that call method, we pass in this on list files, and then that gets called when, when the desktop is done doing its thing. The agent provider, again, down in the desktop, it, it exposes observable events. Uh, in this case, there was just one, that on file change, and then back on the, um, on the ng client session we can register for those events um, uh, and that get that calls this register method which you run some custom logic this is down in the desktop this is what you know added a watcher to the the directory to or the file to to get the callback um, 
back in the HTML5, the ng client session, um, we have this the simple API. You just call register, you give it the event name, you give it the callback and some extra info, and then we handle that in the callback, that on file change, and that's where we we refresh the timestamp. On the agent provider side, down in the desktop, we want, when we want to call an event, there's just a simple API to call invoke. You pass in the event name and then some custom information. So that's pretty much um, how it works. Uh, I should point out that it does require the smart client to be running, um, which means you have to be you have to be able to run Java on the on the um, on the machine that you want to talk to, um, and uh, the the smart client has to be running, but it can also there's a way to launch it with a deep link. So if it's not already running, if you don't already have a running agent for the the ng client session, you can launch it through a deep link. Although that part, the very first time it launches, there will be like a, a delay when it's downloading, so it wouldn't be a seamless experience you'd, until you got that agent running. So there, I think there's some kinks to be worked out there in terms of user experience, but um, from from an architecture point of view, once the smart client's running, you have a pretty good uh, proxy to the desktop. Um, again, we've we've um, worked on this with a couple of customers already in proof of concepts, but um, uh, right now it's um, it's in a project on GitHub, which is still a, currently a private repository. So, um, if you're interested in uh, trying this out, or you have some use cases that you want to run past us, uh, what I'm asking is that you contact us directly. Uh, and we'll um, we'll take a look at at your use case and see how we can apply this to that. See if it's a good fit. Um, I'll post the slides um, and the link to the recording on the forum, and you can always visit all of the prior recorded sessions on our website at the Tech Series uh, page. So that's it. Um, Jan, do we have any questions? Well, that was a nice and brief uh, session. Yeah, there's a couple of questions coming in. Uh, one of them is uh, what operating systems uh, can um, can you use for this uh, for the desktop agent? Right. Well, because it is um, because it is just using the smart client, that's cross um, cross platform. So and it's Java based, so we can support any operating system that runs Java. Okay. So your your uh, client so the client could be any client within a network running Mac, Windows, and Linux, correct? Or you may potentially even the server. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, excellent. Uh, I think in one use case we used a a desktop computer with a connected scanner to scan uh, documents. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we 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 talked to a couple of network scanners uh, to scan documents, and and we pretty much set up a form, put a button on it, uh, click scan, and then um, we showed a progress bar, and then a few seconds later, the image showed up right there in the uh, on the form in the browser. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, so far the only questions I am seeing coming in. Uh, I'll uh, we'll wait a few. Uh, minutes or maybe half a minute to see if anything else uh, comes in. Uh, any thoughts on the topic um, two weeks from now, Ashan? Uh, yeah, let me bring up, I think I have one more slide. Oh, I didn't update this slide. Uh, two weeks from now, we're going to be doing um, a topic about CSS and theming. Um, so it'll be an overview of CSS and the HTML5 client, but also a bit about uh, some research we've done into um, making your applications more themable so that you can reskin them or restyle them easily. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. All right, well, it looks like this is a very clear uh, topic to everybody because I'm not seeing additional questions uh, come in. For those interested in using this, so browser to uh, hardware integration, uh, whether it's uh, scanners or USB drivers or local software, you can now integrate all of them write in your uh, browser feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll be in uh, touch with you we do expect to release this as a, as a standard component when it has been used a bit more and we've figured out the use cases um, we probably also have to do some research uh, with regards to security concerns uh, Sean. i'm not sure how parsing strings from a browser to an executable uh, is, is protected at this point in time 
Well, it's not it's not called directly from from the browser. It's called from the smart client. So that's already an authenticated session. So it's the same as when you run this in in the smart client. Okay. Well, that sounds uh, sounds good. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks everybody for uh, attending, and we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, two weeks from now. We expect to post these recordings in a few days on uh, on our website. Thank you. Thanks.